What is up, my favorite cubers? It's another STEM Sunday. Um, it's me, Ninja Girl, here again, and I've got a lot to talk to you guys about. So first off, we're gonna cover what's going on, what's coming up, everything like that in STEM and space. And then I want to talk about me a little bit. I have a very exciting announcement. And then finally, I have a challenge for you guys. So um, let's dive in. Um, let's see, we just had Environmental Day, so that's a good day to think about the Earth, um, which weirdly enough, space people are very environmental friendly. We all know that this is the one place that we know of in the entire universe as of right now that can harbor human life and uh, that's very special valuable and I mean it's just a really great planet so it's time for us to take care of it also on June 23rd we have International Women in Engineering Day which obviously that's a big deal to me as a female engineer it's a great day to just celebrate the differences um, that you see in industry and open all those uh, welcome all those with open arms um, and make it a great day to celebrate women who are going through struggles that you might not know about to be um, the best engineers that they can be so i love that day that that day's near and dear to my heart um, some of the, one thing that I really wanted to talk about that happened in May actually was we just had the anniversary for the one year anniversary for Launch America or uh, the Crew Dragon. If you guys know the Crew Dragon from SpaceX, it actually launched from Florida, um, the Kennedy Space Center, um, the Cape Canaveral over there. So it actually launched two humans two astronauts, Bob and Doug, and launched them to the ISS and that was a year ago in May. Um, and that was just an amazing thing to say, see because since the shuttle right here <laughs> since the shuttle um nasa has not actually been responsible for the launches of all their astronauts and that was since what 2011 that's a lot of years to go um where they're actually sent over to russia and launched from russian soil and so this is a mark of um kind of nasa in the u.s uh bringing space back into the um number one priority i would say in getting humans back to space from American soil. Um, it was a very proud moment for NASA and um, very exciting for the rest of the world to see SpaceX really take off, um, really putting humans in space. It's always a good thing to see um, humans going to space. So the other thing I want to talk about, like I said, is I have an exciting announcement. So earlier this month, or I guess last month in May, I graduated with my master's degree in space resources. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm so proud of myself. You guys don't understand the heartache. Um, so many late nights, so many confusing conversations with professors and, and a lot of dedication to do that. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just so proud of myself. And I want to talk a little bit about what space resources is. It's a brand new field. So like when I say I have a master's degree in this, uh, people kind of look at me funny. And it's really cool to say that because I'm one of very few people who actually have a master's degree um, in space resources. So this is something called in situ resource utilization or ISRU. You're going you're gonna to see a lot of that coming up in the space industry. And basically what we're looking at doing is using the resources in space for space exploration, humans in space, that kind of thing. And um, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about like asteroid mining and that kind of stuff. Um, there's rumors out there that it's theorized that the first trillionaire will be an asteroid miner. Um, and I completely agree with those statements because there's actually a lot of resources out there on asteroids from gold, silver, platinum, and then we get into like uranium and all sorts of energy sources. Um, there's even water on asteroids. If we can start figuring out how to use those, um, we're going to see an uh, exponential increase in what we can do in space um, just because we don't have to launch everything from Earth. And that's a very exciting thing to see, to say. Um, the other thing that it kind of focuses on is not just asteroids, but a lot of stuff out there, um, specifically the moon. You guys all know I'm a moon girl. Um, so I like to, people think it's just a rock up there, like a dusty, dirty rock, and there's so much more to the moon than that. Um, there's a bunch of uh, regolith, which is like the soil on the moon, and regolith has these like really unique properties to make it super strong. So they're thinking we can construct stuff like roads and, and houses and bases and stuff like that out of the regolith, and that'll help with the um, structural integrity, it'll help with solar radiation, all these issues that we're seeing, it could be a number a great way to start solving those. We also have something on the moon called helium-3, which is an energy source, kind of like uh, the nuclear energy and stuff like that. Um, there's only a little bit of it here on Earth and it's actually really hard to get to, but it's like theorized that there's enough of this helium-3 on the moon that you can help support the energy um, required for human growth for thousands of years. And I think, I mean, 
that's one of our number one issues is figuring out how to sustain human growth. And, and the answer is on the moon. It's out there for us to, to, to um, reach out and figure out how to use it for, for our benefit. And then we also have water on the moon, which is super cool. No one thinks that. There's not like oceans, but there's frozen water, um, like kind of mixed in with all that regolith. And we can use that water for humans to drink. We can turn it into the hydrogen and oxygen, and then humans can breathe the oxygen. But actually, hydrogen and oxygen are the two things we need for rocket fuel. So suddenly the moon becomes like a gas station on our way to Mars. There's a million things that we can do with space resources, and the fact that I was able to get my degree in this um, and really pioneer the future of this field is just like, ah, oh, I can't believe it. I'm so excited to say that. So um, that was a really exciting thing for me. It's, it's some space facts that people probably didn't know about, and um, I'm really glad that I get to be a part of it, and I'm very proud of myself. So I hope you guys are proud of me too. Okay, so like I said, I've got a challenge for you guys. Um, for a lot of you, if you're a student or a teacher, it's uh, summertime, so congrats, you made it. You survived the school year and it's time to relax a little bit. What better way to relax than to pick up a Rubik's Cube? So this is my challenge. If you've never solved a Rubik's Cube before, I want you to start now. If you're following this page because you think it's cool, but you've never really tried it, this is your time. This is your chance to do it. So there's three first steps that I want you to learn before July, before the STEM Sunday in July. Are you guys ready? Okay, so the first one is we're gonna make a daisy. Um, and it, like I said, this is all completely doable. Um, I have faith in you guys. So step one, you're gonna make this daisy and it's going to look like, hold on, I can do this. Can I? <laughs> Got a master's degree, but I can't think on my feet. There we go, there's a daisy. Can you see it? How like the yellow's in the middle and then the whites are on the edges? Um, okay, so that's step one. And then you guys are going to turn it around and make a white cross like that. So that's step two. You see the cross like that. There you go. You can see a little bit better. Okay, step one, daisy. Step two, white cross. And then you're just gonna put the corners on. That's that's it. You're just gonna you're just gonna finish off the white side. Um, and after that, you guys, you, you did your first three steps. You, you met the challenge, so you guys can take a break for the rest of the month as soon as you do this, and we can come back next month and do the next few steps. So then we're gonna have a white side like that. You guys got that? White daisy, white cross, full white side. I have complete faith that you guys can do this, um, and I really wanna see it. So if you guys, before next STEM Sunday in July, you gotta send pictures to me, to Rubik's, tag us at an engineer girl, at Rubik's underscore official, and we will um, just celebrate the fact that you learned how to solve one side of the Rubik's Cube. Now let's say you guys already know how to solve the Rubik's Cube. This is what I want you to do. I want you to learn three new algorithms, which means you're gonna have to go online and uh, research <laughs> what algorithms you're missing and how you can be faster. And this is your challenge to start getting your time down. Um, so that's what we've got. We've got either the first three steps or three new algorithms and you've got a whole month to do it. So I have complete faith in you. Um, this is a fun thing to do this summer. So hopefully you will take me up on this challenge. Um, and later this month, I will be posting the three algorithms that I learned. So I think that's gonna be very exciting. Um, June should be a very fun month. Like I said, it's summer now and uh, at least I'll be relaxing now that I've graduated. And I'm really excited to see what you guys do. So we'll see you guys next month. And as always, keep cubing. Bye guys.